my dog just thinks he's so tough. Just ignore him. He thinks he's a big dog. Chihuahuas and Pomeranians are so mean. Hi everybody, my name is Skylar. I'm a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist, and this is Myth Busting Mondays, where we take common dog myths, dive into them, and figure out where the truth lies and why this came to be a myth. Today we're talking about small dog syndrome, whether small dog syndrome is a real thing, what truth lays behind it, and what can we do to help our small dogs feel a little bit more comfortable in this big dog world. How many times have you heard somebody in your life mention small dog syndrome or how their dog just thinks that they're a big dog or oh my gosh they're just so tough for their little size or they have a Napoleon complex or small dogs are scary because they're so mean. I know for sure I've heard all of these things and I've probably said a couple of these things in the past. But why is this the case and why is this a phenomenon that's so popular and widely understood that we've created the name small dog syndrome? Now because this is Myth Busting Mondays it's probably not a surprise that the whole small dog syndrome concept is not really a thing and doesn't have a ton of truth or research behind it. So why are we so convinced that this is a real thing? And why do we notice an obvious phenomenon in smaller dogs that seem so mean and angry and a little extra bitey? Small dog syndrome is less of a syndrome or personality disorder and more of repeated attempts of setting boundaries being completely ignored. Because of their size, small dogs often learn that attempts at setting boundaries means that they're gonna get laughed at or picked up and coddled. Particularly because of their size, many small dogs learn early on that any attempt to set boundaries is met with laughter, cuddling, or just completely ignoring that a boundary was set. Once these boundaries are set and ignored and set and ignored and set and ignored again, these dogs have to continue to ramp up how they are setting those boundaries in desperate attempts for you to finally notice. This leads to increasing severity of expressions of discomfort, like going from barking to growling and then all the way up to biting. Dogs are naturally self-preserving, which means that they don't want to fight. They're gonna try to do everything in their power they can to avoid conflict unless they feel like they really, really have to. This means that they feel like their lives are more at risk of being in danger by not doing anything than if they escalated it and caused a fight or an altercation. If dogs are naturally self-preserving and they want to avoid conflict as much as possible, why are so many small dogs going straight from zero to 100. It creates results. Before dogs go from zero to 100, they have a lot of steps in between. They have a lot of warning signs. More subtle things like lip licking, a whale eye, trying to get distance, to less subtle things like the barking, the growling, the lunging, the biting. If we continually ignore all of the early warning signs that maybe aren't as obvious as the barking and growling, but are much more important to pay attention to, they're gonna realize that those just don't work. So now instead of starting at one and slowly working our way up to 100, we'll just start jumping to the first thing that worked in the desperate attempt to get you to just stop. So we're no longer doing those early warning signs that are nice and helpful to us. We're now going straight to the barking or straight to the lunging or straight to the growling, straight to the surprise bites where it goes from, they gave no warning signs whatsoever, oh my gosh, I'm being bitten. There's usually warning signs. And if there's truly not, because we've either ignored or punished all the warning signs. So if small dog syndrome is not actually a syndrome or a personality disorder, it's just a means of keeping themselves safe in their environment, why don't we really see it in big dogs? We do. We do see these kinds of things in big dogs. It's just labeled differently. They're often more likely to be labeled as dangerous, hazards to society, or needing to be put down because they're bigger. They can often do a lot more damage and it's not as cute when the 100 pound dog is doing the same things that the five pound dogs are doing. They also just tend to take big dog's warnings a little bit more seriously because again, they can often do a bit more damage just because of their size. But this doesn't mean that it's fair that we respect the boundaries of the big dog because they can do more harm to us and ignore the boundaries of the little dog because they can't do as much harm to us. And this is the big problem that we need to really look inward for. Not only as individuals, but as a society in the whole. Dogs have every size deserve to feel safe and have their boundaries respected. So how can we do that? How can you help your dog set those boundaries and keep them from having to protect those boundaries on their own? First and foremost, we need to advocate for them. Especially if you're a people pleaser, advocating for your dog 
can be a little awkward and tough to start doing at the very beginning, but let me tell you, it is so important and one of the number one things that you should become really comfortable doing. Dogs can't speak for themselves, and not everyone is great at reading dog body language and understanding what's going on. So you need to be able to support your dog through this and help others understand what's happening. You can advocate for your dog by asking people to give you additional space when you need it. This can be people walking down the street that you don't know. This could be family members at the barbecue that you do know. If you're noticing that your dog needs a little extra space, be sure that you ask people for that space and help to reinforce that boundary for them so they don't have to do it themselves. You can also help remove your dog from any fearful or stressful situations. If you notice that your dog's feeling extra stressed out or their anxiety is going up, they're more likely to start jumping up the scale of that zero to 100 if their emotions are already heightened. So finding times that they can add space in whatever is making them nervous or fearful, giving them opportunities to decompress, whether through sniffing or lick mats or other enrichment toys, helps to lower those stress levels and make it so that they're able to manage their own feelings and behavior better. You can also make your dog's boundaries clear to other people. When we interact with our own dogs all the time, we often know that they don't like it when you come up too fast. They don't like it when you scratch their ears. They don't like people wearing big hats. We know all those things, but other people might not know those things. But we wanna be able to speak up ahead of time to help set everything up for success and either avoid those things that they don't like or figure out a way to help them be successful in that situation. Last but not least, you can educate people on the actual reasoning behind the funny or cute small dog syndrome behaviors. Oh, look at your dog. He thinks that he's such a big dog. No, he's just very uncomfortable with your giant dog coming up to us off leash. Oh, just ignore the barking. He thinks he's a big dog. No, there's a bunch of kids running by the front door and so that's causing him to be a little more reactive. We're in training and we're working on it. Or chihuahuas are so mean. No, he just doesn't like being flipped on his belly and forced to be pet while he's actively barking at you. I feel like that one seemed a little obvious in the beginning here. So I think we've officially determined small dog syndrome to be a myth. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions about small dog syndrome or have any other thoughts or topics for future Myth Busting Monday episodes. Some of your comments might even inspire future videos. Again, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.